welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Recently, I did part one of a, an episode, the many brain benefits of Alcar and ALA. They're two nutrients that are natural to the human brain. And I went over the mechanisms, why they're so important for the brain, how they restore energy production in an aging brain. They belong in the brain, but their activity declines with age. And many studies show that when you take them as a supplement, they safely restore the utilization of energy in the brain. But they also create key neurotransmitters for memory, uh, for all kinds of functions in the brain. Uh, As far as the benefits, they're very helpful for um, memory functions. They're extremely helpful for mood, for depression. They're helpful for energy in the brain. Uh, as a side benefit, they seem to help tinnitus ringing in the ears. About 40 million Americans suffer from tinnitus. So Alcar and ALA are must-haves for the human brain, for the aging human brain. A younger brain should have plenty of them. So let's discuss Alcar and ALA for memory. It's critical for the function of parts of the brain involved with memory, for for recreating memory cells that you're losing on a daily basis, for hardening the wiring between these organs, the hippocampus, the uh, entorhinal cortex, the dentate gyrus. They have to function together for your brain to work in a clever, smart way, in a, in a quick way, for all those brainy things that us humans do. So Alcar with ALA help um, restore the health of these organs involved with memory functions and cognitive functions and executive functions and problem solving skills, etc. cetera. Uh, but they also uh, help generate um, connectivity. They help you generate new neural pathways and they strengthen the connection between these organs. So this is the Biomedical Research Foundation. In this part of the episode, we're going to talk about um, the studies involved with Alcar and ALA for the brain. And I kept it simple. The first one is from the Biomedical Research Foundation. They worked with a whole bunch of research institutions over in Italy, because Italy has the biggest brain bank, donated brains post-mortem in the planet. So the Biomedical Research Foundation is down in Arkansas, and they do neurological research for veterans' health because the veterans are prone to like post-traumatic stress disorder and depression, etc. So this study was published in PLOS One, which is a great group of journals that you and I pay for. The American public pays for that through our taxes. They're open access, meaning anybody could go into each, these journals and look at the full studies. So it was post-mortem research looking at healthy older brains, Brains with subjective memory loss. Subjective memory loss means I think I'm forgetting something, but my wife is telling me, no, I'm fine. Healthy older brains, subjective memory loss. Mild cognitive impairment, which means there's been a lot of brain shrinkage that's affecting your ability to understand directions and instructions, um, your memory's failing you. And it's a portal to Alzheimer's disease. So people with Alzheimer's disease, their brains are included also. And there's a powerful decline, a very progressive decline in the amount of alcohol in the brain as brain health declines. In other words, the Alzheimer's brain was very low in alcohol. Now, mild cognitive impairment, which is many steps above Alzheimer's, there was still a big decrease. Subjective memory loss, less than usual. Healthy older brains had more. So the healthy older brain had a good amount of Alcar, subjective memory loss, a little bit less, mild cognitive impairment, a lot less, Alzheimer's, practically none. I mean, right there, that tells you something's going on. Now, when it comes to the brain, the brain is very complex, so when you create a supplement for the brain, it shouldn't be just one ingredient. So the University of Lowell, that's up in Massachusetts, uh, there's a Dr. Thomas Shea that's done a lot of brain research, and he mixed together... Uh, a number of different supplements 
and he's using it in older people who've had some brain shrinkage, they have mild cognitive impairment. He's using it in people with early stage Alzheimer's, and he's using it in older people that are just a little bit forgetful, which is quite natural. Subjective memory complaints is quite natural. He mixed Alcar, the acetylcarnitine, along with SAMI, SAMI's great for depression, along with NAC, NAC would be a replacement for ALA because it creates glutathione in the brain, uh, vitamin E, and several B vitamins, folate and B12. And they did a, a series of studies for healthy older brains, but also patients with memory loss and patients with brain shrinkage, etc. And they found over the first three months of using these nutrients, a certain level of memory was restored, and these people held on to this level of memory regain over the course of a year. In fact, in one of his studies, they saw such a clear difference between the patients on um, placebo versus the patients on the supplements that they, they later added the people on placebo and they saw the same gains. Over the first three months, they regained lost memory and they held on to that steadily for the course of the entire study. Now, Alcar and ALA easily cro cross into your brain, but let me give you a tip. They get into your brain better if you take them away from food. So I tell people take them at least an hour before, an hour is plenty, or two hours after meals. Because once you eat, you release insulin, and insulin shoves a large neutral amino acid into the brain, and you get less Alcar into your brain. Um, that large neutral amino acid is called L-tryptophan. And the brain does that because the tryptophan creates serotonin that stops you from eating. It makes you satiated full, so you don't keep on eating. So when you eat, you release insulin. This shunts tryptophan into the brain. That blocks other large amino acids from getting into the brain like Alcar. So take the Alcar with ALA at least an hour before or two hours or more after meals to get into your brain. So this is a meta-analysis of 16 human clinical trials how Alcar improved cognitive health on a mini mental state exam. So these are people that had a certain amount of shrinkage of their brain. They had a certain amount of memory loss. It's more than subjective memory loss. People actually noted that they were losing their memory. And they found that giving the Alcar slowed the deterioration of mental functions. It really meant something. It really meant something. There's a number of studies where they mixed Alcar with other nutrients or ALA with other nutrients and people with severe memory loss, and they saw a benefit. They saw a benefit. Now, depression. Um, they found that in older people, there's a, we know that there's a drop of Alcar function in the brain of older people, and there's a drop in the function of ALA in older people. And that's strongly tied into the development of major depressive disorder, which is hard to treat. It's a very deep depression. And they found that people with major depressive disorder, there's a big drop in Alcar. And this is directly correlated with worsening depression and advancing age. So as you get older, Alcar drops and depression blooms. Not good. And then the greatest drop in in Alcar was in patients with treatment resistant depression. The drugs weren't working. This was especially true in, in women who faced a lot of childhood trauma, some kind of abuse. Now that was uh, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It's from Rockefeller University in New York City, Weill Cornell Medical College, Duke University, Mount Sinai, and Stanford University. So it's important data. In a journal of psychosomatic medicine, there was a review of 12 randomized controlled human clinical trials. Alcar significantly improved the symptoms of depression. It worked very quickly in older adults. It was very safe. You could use it with antidepressant drugs like fluoxetine, you know, like drugs like Prozac and Paxil, etc., or you could use it alone. But it, it was safe, and it worked, and it worked rather quickly. In a review of three human clinical trials, Alcar worked as well as prescription antidepressants, including Paxil, and it worked faster. And adding Alcar to antidepressants was very helpful. For instance, one of the studies I read, when they gave patients um, 
it was fluoxetine in that study. When they gave patients fluoxetine, uh, that's an SSRI, it increases serotonin levels, um, it helped people with major depressive disorder, but not everybody. Like, like it helped about 80% of people. And if they gave them Alcar, it helped an awful lot of these people. But if they added Alcar to the fluoxetine, it helped almost every patient. These were people with treatment-resistant depression. Now, they also find a correlation with a drop in Alcar and the onset of Parkinson's. This was in the Fairways Hospital System and also UCLA. It was published in Neuroscience Letters, so let me explain what that's about. First of all, Parkinson's disease is a brain disease in the back of the brain and a part of the brain that controls your muscles and your balance and your movement. And people with Parkinson's disease, they get stiff, they have a slow, rigid gait, they develop tremors like their, hand is, their hands are shaking, their head is shaking. So they went to the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands are above Scotland. In fact, they're close to Norway, so they're kind of like, they're part of Norway, really. They're ruled by, they're governed by Norway. So, you know, above Scotland, you have places like the, the, the Shetland Islands. You also have the Faroe Islands. And uh, there's a very high incidence of Parkinson's disease there compared to other places on the planet. So they want to see why. Why is there so much Parkinson's disease? Well, the extra Parkinson's disease that you would see above and beyond normal population groups was due to a genetic problem. There was a gene problem in the brain. But for the regular amount of people with Parkinson's, it was strongly tied into a decline of Alcar activity. So they found two reasons for Parkinson's and why it was so common in the Faroe Islands. One was like everybody else, when Alcar drops, you have a higher risk of Parkinson's. Probably not the only reason, of course. And the other reason for the excess number of Parkinson's was actually a gene defect. Here's, so here's what you can expect to feel with Alcar with ALA. I've been taking it myself for years. I mean, I make my living with my brain. Um, you'll get this evolving sense of well-being. Like, you'll see after a week or two, your, your mood has clicked up many levels. I mean, it just feels wonderful. I mean, it's, it's like a young person. They, they wake up in the morning, and they're full of life, and they're looking forward to their day. That's what you feel like again. It's wonderful. Um, more mental clarity. Your brain is more on the ball. Uh, you've, you have more energy in the brain. Uh, your memory improves somewhat. It's all good. And, and your brain feels good. Your brain literally feels good. Your brain literally feels good. So, taking alcohol with ALA supports brain energy, supports memory, clicks your mood up a couple of level, but it's healing for your brain, it fights aging in the brain, it helps restore uh, different functions in the brain and the creation of memory cells, things that are failing you with age. It's good for your awareness, your problem solving, learning, remember, your focus, your mental energy. All along, great product, great product, been using it for years. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by going to invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. Please make sure you subscribe. Please leave us a review. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. Hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Music.